Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Shiro Clicks. I'm your host, Calder Ness. This episode is our Simeon send off episode, ladies and gentlemen, as we're going to be discussing the best, worst, favorite, all the amazing moments in Simeon Style Age for Hero Click's career. Thank you so much to everybody that sent in questions that we're about to answer this week. This episode 524. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Click's help. I have the high ground. Oh, yeah, you may have the high ground. It's over, Simeon. Yeah. Instant deadpan. Over oh, six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. Simeon will be able to make that out. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make your clips like that forever. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Shiro Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. You can go to shop.wizkids.com for ooh, ah, Hero Clicks. I want to say the 4th of July sale is probably over, but you can still use code dial h 10 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order of in stock items, no pre orders, no iconics, etc., etc. Joining me in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, you know, it's just uh, another Monday. Another Monday. Ain't that right, Garfield? <laughs> I, I realized in the intro what a terrible time if this were someone's like first episode. Hey, whoops. Enjoy yeah. it, I guess. <laughs> Maybe uh, scroll back a couple years. <laughs> Scroll back a couple. You know what? If you could just start over a couple of years and a 2019 ish, that'd be great. Thanks. And then you'll re- you'll catch up on all the lore you missed because it was good. It was good lore. Uh, Got to do the classic. What made you happy this week, my man? Oh man, the people the people want it. People need it. They need it. What made me happy? Not only was it chilly, nice, cool summer weather. Not only was it the Fourth of July. But I, I grilled. I did some grilling oh, yeah. for the fourth. Made some hot dogs, some hamburgers, some ooh, some corn on the cob. I love throw corn on the cob and like some some uh, tin foil with some butter, mm. some spices. And you just throw that right on the grill. Cooks it up nice and uh, nice and neat. Uh, but that was basically it. That was a uh, that was it for food this week, man. I kind of slacked off for my last week. Light food week? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, no no classic desserts or uh interesting things like that. Man, I'm trying to think. New what's, what's new there? fear unlocked. Uh, a light simian food week. This can't be true. This can't be happening. <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh it's been a normal normal just, you know, oatmeal in the morning and uh handful of pistachios throughout the day kind of week uh roll right on you know how roll right on right yeah yeah that's what everyone eats for lunch is just everybody like, yeah like just a handful snacks. just a real quick pistachios hey don't mind me i'm just individually cracking the shell off my pistachios there's the only thing better than a snack is a snack you really have to work for <laughs> to get. It's just, for. it's just that tasty yeah, yeah. my I favorite that, uh that 007 villain jaws like i'm gonna get that procedure oh done, there you so go i can just eat, i can shove them in my mouth like uh sunflower seeds and just crunch and then just kind of crunch yeah and spit them out which yeah <laughs> uh kind of the same thing made me happy this week it was the fourth of july uh my family and some friends went over to seward which is apparently nebraska's fourth of july city i didn't know that i learned then i guess i learned on the fourth of july that that was the thing and it was just kind of a a very nice kind of county fair vibes it was real cool it was real fun they probably packed in the entire city of seward plus like ten thousand people it felt like it was just the streets were flooded with 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 people it was great we're having a grand old time saw a pie eating contest they they had now they ate dang did they eat uh, had you know some burgers from uh, from food trucks. It was a great time. The Seward High School, I guess, was doing just pole vaulting. It was just happening, and I, at that moment, I realized I've never seen it in real life. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of neat. This is kind of cool. 
nice. Just kind of random kind of events and things happening. And then, yeah, ended it with with fireworks that you could tune in to 104.9 Max Country to listen to the music that I guess is supposed to go along with the fireworks show. We didn't do that. We didn't have a, we didn't have a radio or in our car. I don't know. I don't know why they thought, but sure. Uh, but then asking people about what played for the finale was a Dolly Parton song, but not one that I'd heard before. It wasn't Jolene or nine to five, which basically starts and stops there. So I, I had no idea, but it was great. But it was a grand old time. Uh, got a wicked, sunburn wearing a tank top with a vest over it so there's a very nice square part of my neck that is just burnt which is hilarious and then uh, yeah just had i don't know what you have had fried chicken had burgers had some red white and blue jello had a good fourth of july and that's what it's all about coolio let's uh let's just jump into the episode shall we let's just get ooh, ah, let's just get right in there Let's get all let's get all freaky with it. Let's get nasty with it. Uh, Sim, that's what the kids I think want me to say. They want to say yeah, no someone's gonna match real, real. our freak. Yeah, that's try one. to get as much weird lingo in the in the episode as possible. You know, um, before we start uh, Sigma munting on the Libby Dunn baby Gronk. Sorry to the. This is I hate this. Let's. We did this last week, and we don't. This never needs to happen ever again. Oh my gosh! So we're cel- we're celebrating Simeon's life. It sounds like you're dying, Simeon. <laughs> no, no. Every time I, I think about saying something, Luckily, I was like, no. Simeon's not yeah. dying. He's gonna hang out. Still gonna play Hero Clicks. Still gonna be uh, a big part of the community, especially here in and around Omaha. But we're just gonna kind of chat about we had a bunch of listener questions come in that were really fun to kind of celebrate simeon's last podcast and kind of going on with everything so uh i i'm a they these range from from serious to silly and i really like that so but i think i want to start yeah we'll just we'll just rip into it so we asked our discord not going to do a Patreon plug. We'll save that for later. Luke 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 asks questions for the Bruce. What are the top three poolside gas station cigarillos? Oh, you got your classics like the uh, White Owls, obviously. Um, man, my personal preference is the Swisher BLKs. But I, I think if you're going cigarillo, I mean, like OG Swisher, it's hard to beat. This is not a this is not a plug for big tobacco. Any children out there listening? Uh, Don't smoke, kids. Are, yeah, best enjoyed without nicotine. It's actually almost impossible because of the the humidity in the water. I will say. Oh, interesting. Tyler M asks, with the collector set giving us. There are also just some all sorts of questions starting here, guys. Uh, giving us gauntlet bearers, will this be the set we get a Santa Claus? If so, how would you guys design him? Santa Claus with the Infinity Gauntlet, I, I, I've seen the comic panel posted on Facebook or whatever, but he's got to give out gifts, right? That's the only thing Santa Claus, or maybe just be really fast, something like that. Say he's... Uh... So he's already some sort of like time mutant something or other in like Marvel, right? He's like, I can't remember if he's a mutant or what he is exactly. I, mean, I think like he is a mutant. Man. I think that's right. Yeah, he's some sort of time dilation dude. And then you're throwing an infinity gauntlet on there. So most people are like, infinity gauntlet, that means pick a power. But it's like, no, no, no. He's about to snap half the presence away. So mm. <laughs> yeah, I think at the end of the game, you just... You do the effect that the uh, iconic Thanos does, but with equipment and sideline elements. Ooh, I do. I actually, I kind of like that. Ooh, stabbing the equipment and sideline. That actually, that actually kind of rocks. I like yeah, that. It's like I just checked my list twice. I don't know, something like that. What's what's? Uh, I am inevitable. That's what Thanos says. I am inevitable. Yeah, I'm, Santa. Would I've have checked to be like, my list twice. I am. And then he'd be like, ho, 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 so jolly. Or so, I don't know. Ooh, that looks kind of fun. Yeah. There's not really a sinister way to do Santa. Not really. He's just such a good guy. He's just such a nice, good guy. Izzo Bill asks questions for Simeon. 
over the years, you've given us Hero Hooks news, team builds, strategies and tactics, set reviews, and so much more. But the thing I think we all miss most is the food that made you happy this week. What food made you the happiest while you were hosting the show? And then he he says, I hope it's the pudding. Yes. Uh, I, I saw know? this one ahead of time. So, yeah, it I I thought back. And I don't know how many times food actually did was like what made me happy. I know like I've, you know, I've smoked some foods, I've grilled, I've baked, I've done some things, but I, I definitely think Budino was the thing that I binge ate the most Ooh. in like an unhealthy amount. And it was definitely the, uh, I got the most uh, comments and like requests because I think when I first talked about it, I just said some sort of butterscotch pudding. I can't remember the name of it. And then I actually had to do some research to remember or figure out that it was called Budino. Uh, but yeah, it's it's delicious stuff. It's actually not too hard to make. So it's it's only oh, nice. ingredients. Um, you don't have to do the whole caramel sauce and the little cracker cookie whatever stuff that some people want. You could just make straight up pudding and then add a little sea salt on top. And you too can enjoy some Budino. But yeah, I think that's... Uh, that one lasted me the longest. I had an insane amount of that stuff, and I just kept eating it. So that's the one that definitely sticks out. I think that's probably the most – the one that sticks out the most to me, it's that, and it's like Louis M's Burger Lust. Because I was like – that was one of the few places that when you mentioned it, I was like, I got to go. I got to go try. If it has a breakfast burrito, goodness gracious. And I did, and I was like, oh, this is actually pretty fire. So those have got to be my top two favorite simian foods of the week although do you know i still have never tried i'll have to get out there do the little make the little recipe do a little budino thing what do you think the over under is if it's like food or the weather i think food takes the weather though i think it's been food more times than it's been weather it's but i don't yeah i think weather has come up more often but not as like what made me happy i think weather definitely is like the uh, I think the pre- like what the, is happy we thing. gotta talk about it because yeah. I mean, yeah we talk about it when it's like horrible too yeah where it's just like you gotta get it the midwest urge to talk about how bad and or good oh, the weather is it's, it's just we have to we have to get it off our chest we have to mention it it's that and uh the blue collar urge to be like i just put in a 16 hour work day and oh yeah guess what i'm still clocked in i'm heading back this was my lunch break like <laughs> I love the I love man I love those videos where it's like you got little baby hands I got these are man hands and it's like a <laughs> clump of dirt holding an uncrustable it's so funny uh, yeah Alex the Enchanter asks in your new position as president of the world what will be your first order of business I was unaware of this I'm glad Alex sleuthed it out and found out that that's what you'll be doing yes, is being I, president of the world I'm leaving the podcast to make time for being president of the world. Uh, my first order of business will be to, uh, obviously, I need a, a very effective cabinet. So I'm going to go to Ikea. I'm going to find the biggest <laughs> cabinet they have. Um, and then I'm going to make that cabinet my vice president. Um, mm. No, uh, if I if I was president of the world, the very first thing I would do, I would make, uh, I think, obviously... We've got esports. We've got um, weird sports. I'd make hero clicks like the next, uh, not national, but it'd, it'd be in the Olympics. We'd get uh, some insane judges. We'd get some, uh, maybe some like triathlon stuff, like the the whole skiing, shooting, uh, biking, whatever that one is. But for hero clicks, oh. like you, have to, you have to play like a silver match. And then you have to sprint up a hill and play a modern 300 match. Oh my and then gosh. You have to ski down and play Bronze Age. I don't know. That actually sounds kind of, Why does that sound kind of awesome, though? Yeah. That kind of rocks. Whatever hero clicks you lose along the way, you don't get to use. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. You just you play with what you can carry. So it'd be hilarious if, like, the the amount of time it takes you. To like go from match to match via swimming, biking, skiing, uh, is like what gets added. Like the clock just starts at like I don't know an hour or something, or maybe like an hour and a half. 
but then it's like you would subtract however much it however long it takes you so in order to get more time playing the game you actually have to be fast and the swimming and biking that could be kind of ooh that could be kind of something i don't know uh are you replacing Hugh Jackman as Wolverine? I also like that Alex is crapshooting a few of these where he's like, well, maybe if it's not president of the world, the next most logical, obviously most logical conclusion is, are you replacing Hugh Jackman as Wolverine? Yes, I'm going to be in the mm. biopic of, uh, it's called um, Retracting the Claws, and it's uh, Hugh Jackman's step back from Wolverine and then his reintegration into the role. And so I'm going to be playing a younger Hugh Jackman from X1. Uh, it's going to take a lot of prosthetics and uh, hair dye to get me looking as young as he did when he was 10 years older than I am now. <laughs> uh, but uh... <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> no, that, uh, you know, I've thought about it. I've thought about it. Hugh's, Hugh's hit me up a few times, but um, yeah, I just I can't commit to the hairstyle. That's just... You'll just rough. you'll just stay as stunt man. You'll just stay as body double, like yeah. stand in. Yeah, you'll just yeah, stick, if, stick with if that. If you ever see him taking a dive in a movie, and for like a brief second, you're like, his beard looked a little longer. That was me. That Ooh, was me. Yeah. Now you know. Uh, and then, you know, actually in this in this role, what is your favorite Wolverine appearance? Like, what is your favorite Wolverine movie slash Wolverine like a movie with Wolverine in it? Oh man, I really. I really dig the X Men Origins like intro series. I love exploring the past of Wolverine, like the the montage where he's going through like different wars and stuff. I love those kind of like scenes. Um, I like seeing like Wolverine in the bar from Days of Future Past and stuff like that. Or no, that's First Class. Days of Future yeah, Past. that's First Class. Yeah. yeah. He, he actually is full. He's like in, straight uh, up Future the main Past. character of Days Future Past. Yeah. Yeah. Um, gosh, I think my I, I, it's hard to beat Logan. It really is because like that's just yeah. uh, such a good role, and then you also get to see like the CGI young Hugh Jackman that he, like when they fight. Um, no, I'll say despite the ending, I'll say X Men Origins is probably like my favorite just because everything that leads up to the terrible finale is pretty solid in my book uh, honestly i kind of like agree with you i really like x-men origins wolverine ian put it on like as a joke a few weeks ago and then i was just kind of like man i forgot how much i just actually like this movie it's just really cool action scene after a really cool action scene and then you know there's a uh... Deadpool at the end but even I don't know even then that's like a cool fight scene when him and Sabretooth are like back to back if you just say it's not Deadpool and you say it's just any other character ever like Mimic or something then I honestly think it's like an awesome kind of an awesome like movie like as a like blockbuster explosions and fights are cool you know yeah Logan is goaded though Logan actually Logan actually is goaded uh Alex asks, what is your favorite episode of the podcast? This one's actually a lot easier than you would think. Um, it's 399.5. It's, Ooh, uh, okay, yeah. It's a, and it's a bit of a cheat answer because 399.5 was like the best of, um, or just like not really like the best of because I, I did not take a ton of time. I could have spent probably weeks putting that episode together, but... Uh, it was just some really classic good moments, some uh, things that have been in, like, bumpers for a while, some things that were, like, in the intro, uh, things that, like, I clipped out from, like, here and there. And then it was also uh, a bunch of, like, our bloopers and stuff. Um, I think my still one of my favorite uh, things that we ever did was the Thread Dead, where we end up on uh, WizKid Twitter with the mutant head <laughs> crab beef. Like, oh, my just, gosh. I genuinely laugh like every single time I re-listen to it because it's just, it's so funny to me. For listeners that don't know about Mutant Head Crab, man, that dude was so like horrible, but so funny. Everything about Mutant Head Crab was so funny. He was just hardcore trolling the, uh, the WizKids Twitter. It was any post, every post, and he would make it somehow negative and then also Heroclix related. Like it would be on... 
the one I remember the most is like the greased lightning one where he's like yeah, greased lightning, you, huh? I wish you would wish ship. Yeah. <laughs> I wish yeah. you would ship yeah. like greased yeah. lightning. <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, yeah, that's an era, man. That was like a solid couple of months where we were just like, what's he saying now? What's he doing now? And then he just kind of fell off the face of the earth, but that yeah. was hilarious. That someone, actually is. Someone just rode his coattails too hard and drug him back down to earth, I guess. Somebody did. Somebody really did. Honestly. Uh, what episode sucked the most to edit? Yeah, I think it's that same one. I think it was... Same one? Yeah. And it wasn't so much the editing. The editing's fine. I, I kind of enjoyed that aspect of like clipping things. It was just finding the different clips. Uh, mm. I, I probably listened on and it was like two times speed i probably listened to like 15 hours of our own like content just like hopping around looking for fun stuff here and there trying to like i don't know just get get some things that like i knew i wanted to and then i'd be like i know this happened but like what episode was it so i knew it was like within a few time frames and i'd have to like jump through them um other than other than that like i'll say not an episode that sucked to edit, but uh, the I think it only happened probably like five times, maybe maybe six times. Maybe I'm being a little little generous with myself, but early on when I first joined, I feel like it happened way more frequently. Just losing episodes was super. Oh rough. man, the amount of times we'd get done, and I'd be like, Audacity isn't doing anything. It's uh, those were sad. Those there. were so depressing. Yeah, so the yeah those probably sucked the most to edit because just knowing that like there was a full episode that was recorded or not recorded beforehand, and so this time I'm like editing the one that actually got recorded. Yeah, yeah, those those were like depressing. We're just like, oh, we just, but we just did this thing, and it's like, yeah, but like do it all again, but for real this time. And I was like, no, no, oh, yeah, those were hard. Number five, what was your favorite closet cosplay for Thursday Throwdown? Slash, for people who don't know what Thursday Throwdown is, why don't you tell them what that is as well? Because we have a few new people oh, yeah. that missed that. Well, in the early 2000s, uh, the early 2020, the year was 2020. Some things were happening, uh, but no venues were playing. Me and Calder weren't able to play. Uh, so we started dabbling with uh, Roll20 as a lot of people. Some people had already been playing on Roll20. Some people only got into it right around that time. Uh, but we started playing on there, and we decided that we were going to do a series where we would start from the very first set, and we would just go set by set, play you know, the first set out versus the second set out. And then we skipped around a little bit when it came to like wonky stuff like gravity feeds and promotional stuff. Yeah. But, uh, all the main sets we hit. And I think it was, gosh, it was probably started with just bad photoshops. And then it was like, oh, I, I have something that actually looks uh, like close enough to this. So like I started doing a, uh, little cosplays and i think where I, I really just uh i can't remember all of them off the top of my head but i think where i really took it to an extra level was the collateral damage captain cold where uh that's what i was gonna say it was like the <laughs> the one that was really above and beyond the rest yeah that one i i had like a, a floor mat that i threw on this that like weird teal jacket that I have in it is just like a it's like a trench coat, but it's like teal colored, and I just found it in a thrift store probably fifteen years ago, and I've never oh, once worn it. So I was weird, like, huh? I actually have something that is like blue and you know whatever, and then I'm think I think I'm just wearing like pajamas underneath it, and then uh, my Captain Cold gun, of course, was my Cadoba burrito for the night, so that was. <laughs> Uh, that one and Two Gun Kid also. I think it was Two Gun Kid, right? With the vacuum. That one was also one of my favorites. But uh, gosh, there's some fun ones. There were some ones that barely held together. Uh, Haunted Tank was one where I wrapped a Haunted towel tank around is hilarious. a box. And I don't know. I have no idea how 
how I managed to get inside that box, but yeah, I just wrapped a towel around it and put Haunted on the front, and that was as best as I could do. But yeah, there were some good ones. I think my personal favorite for both of us was the Age of Ultron versus Nick Fury, where you're Dr. Demonicus and I'm Black Panther, and it's just... Oh, it's yeah. really it's just really funny any any of the ones where you paint your face are yeah. all great uh the <laughs> old man wizard shazam is hilarious uh there's <laughs> there's a lot of good ones lobo man that was oh great at rocked uh namor iconic namor's iconic uh yeah. that one's good straight up yeah the shazam or the um, the one from yeah origins versus supernova where I'm, I'm yeah. pretty sure I'm wearing like my sister's bathrobe because I had no white cloak thing. Eilish. And then uh, she helped me out with the, uh, what is that, S- uh, saran wrap on my head. And then. Yeah, to <laughs> be bald. So it I was so, bald spot. Oh, so funny. And then the, to get that gray effect, literally just threw flour in my face. Like, that's all that is. Surprising how well that worked. Incre- just really wasn't just incredible. It really was just, yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of good ones. The Thursday Throwdown playlist, it's all on YouTube. It's all it's all there. You can see all of our wacky, goofy, old school, hilarious costume thumbnails. They're worth a look. They're just a great time. Tyler M asks: Since Simeon is moving on to greener pastures, how will the Dial H team find a new member? Possibly a a Royal Rumble style match? Uh, no. Uh, Simeon or Simeon is just gonna whatever. Ian's gonna be on the podcast. It's it's just so simple. It just oh, who will do the podcast with Calder? That other guy. That other the other one. The, the, uh, the that guy. The third one is also here. <laughs> the third one that's also here. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if this is a role that's gonna be like a oh we gotta have. Simi in number two tryouts. We have to. I think it's you know if it develops, it develops. Uh, if not, it's uh, it'll be Calder and Ian for a little while, just kind of doing what we be doing, doing whatevs, doing whatevs for real. Um, but we also have some pretty good Hero Clicks friends that could potentially step up from time to time uh, when help is needed. You know, there's there's quite a few. There's also a few like Patreon members that are really cool people that are, you know, really fun to like chat with and everything that may pop in, be guests on the podcast every once in a while, you know, stuff like that. But it's not exactly going to be something that I'm going to seek out. You know, when I when Chris left the podcast a million years ago, I was like, oh, it, it was just Chris and I. So I was like, well, I definitely need somebody can't do it by myself so then that's why Simeon Simeon was a huge help when he first joined it was like oh man I I literally can't just be a single person and do it there are but that sucks that's not that's not fun that sucks so I think in this is a just a different scenario where it's like we don't necessarily need to go out of my way or you know try to find anybody or you know whatever it'll just be all right yeah and when I joined it was for the most part, fairly organic. Like we had, I wouldn't say hung out, but we had. Uh, it was pretty natural. A bit we and... we were in our uh, rival era. Yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, the nemesis zone. It was just kind of like you know, and yeah, even back then, it's like, well, who? How'd you decide? And I was like, nah, it just kind of seemed like, yeah, Simeon's gonna be the guy I want to do the podcast with. It was it was pretty natural. It was pretty simple. Uh, yeah, just a natural way of just kind of going about it, where it was like in in one door, out the other, out the other, out one door, in the other. It's like, oh yeah, of course. So it just kind of made sense. So there's there's kind of never really going to be any forcing anything. I don't think at all. Bill asks another slew of questions here. Um, wild. Some of these are quite interesting, quite wild. So number one is Doctor Doom cooler than Captain America? Oh, I hate to say. I mean. Because Calder's on the podcast, but yes, Doctor Doom's cooler. That I hurts. Mean, that hurts, obviously. He's, I think. he's just, yeah, he's evil. Like he, you know, <laughs> heroes have to team up to like thwart evil, and evil's always cooler because it's like I'm, I'm the thing that all it takes all of you to take me down. Like that's just, yeah. Mm. If it was like uh, reversed, where it was like 
they took a team of villains and they only sent one hero, which sometimes that happens, I guess. That's the whole Sinister Six thing, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then those villains are less cool and the hero's cooler. But yeah, Doctor Doom is always like, at minimum, it's four, I think, to take down Doctor Doom. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess it is true. Wow. Number two, favorite billboard you ever put up. This one I'm also curious about as well. Oh, man. That's yeah. Uh, well, there's there is a certain festival that happens uh, in June that is a fun one. But favorite I've ever put up. Gosh. Uh, oh, that took me a second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that uh, rocks. I I genuinely don't know off the top of my head. I think uh, yeah, we it's probably like the ones with like the big wild like cutouts and stuff like hanging all over and stuff like that. Um, my favorites are usually like genuinely like the one that I would rather do more often than not is the digital ones. Cause we just set up mm. the crane and set that down and then the digital just stays there forever. And I don't have to mess with it ever again. And that's, that's my favorite. But, uh, as far as like advertisement stuff goes, um, yeah, like the, the ways that North Platte, Nebraska tries to drum up, uh, travel and, do you call that um visitors to them visitors sure yeah yeah. it's it's kind of wild like they have an avocado toss yearly and then uh one of their other big promotions is come tanking in north platte and like tanking is just it's like tubing but you take one of those big cattle feed tanks like the big circular metal it's like about three and a half foot tall and you just stick that in the river and you just sit in it i'm like that is probably the most boring way to advertise your city is like yeah hey you know what's great about our city you can go and get in the river and forget about it for a while <laughs> like Jeez. it's enjoyable but it's kind of uh, yeah like, you just jump in a water tank and just yeah. kind of float i guess when you compare it to like uh oceans of fun down in kansas city uh not really not really gonna go the four five hours to north platte instead of uh the like two and a half so those ones are fun but only because it's very very sad to me also i lived in north platte so i'm allowed to say all this it's a mm. sad place makes sense makes sense oh <laughs> no uh no, no shout out to barry law Mal- oh. mallory hughes those ones are always i think i find hilarious they're not meant to be funny but they just kind of are those ones yeah. are definitely the forehead man. Love driving by the forehead man. When we were first installing uh, the big light fixtures on seriously, seriously injured, uh, mm. it was about three thirty, and we had the word serious. So we still need an L a Y. The whole in- word injured. We needed to like crane all those letters still up and attach them still, and then a question mark. And I just looked at the guy who's been doing this for almost 30 years at this point, And I was like, do you think we could just finish the word seriously and then add the question mark and we'll just forget about injured until next week? <laughs> <laughs> like, apparently, no, that was, <laughs> but now knowing, knowing more about like how the, how they want their advertisements to be perceived. I don't think Barry Law would have found that as funny as I would have. Cause yeah. Yeah. Driving down the interstate and you just eat seriously. seriously? Like seriously. Uh, no, seriously? that one was funny. Uh, but yeah, the one where his giant forehead was sticking above the billboard. I don't know if that one's even still up. I feel like that one might've. Oh man. That's so sad. That one's like, gone. That one's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, Bill asks favorite road trip memory. With the Dial H gang. Oh, man. There's so many. Um, one of my least favorite was, like, the conjoined road trip. We were same destination, different vehicles. And that was uh, when I got stuck in Chicago. That was uh, tough. Three-way traffic for three hours, like, at a dead standstill. Um, man. I think Memphis was always, like, a fun drive. I think both the times to Memphis. Although this last time to Memphis... It got a little sketchy towards the end because it was like pitch black out, and then all of a sudden it was misty everywhere, and just yeah, it was like hard to see. That one was like a little sketchy, but yeah, those those long road trips, and then uh, we had the smart forethinking to stop like halfway, so it wasn't like whatever the full yeah 
14 or whatever hours it would have been normally. It was, I kind of forgot about it getting all weird like that. I honestly kind of didn't remember, but that was kind of odd. As a going away present, WizKids lets you pick a legacy card. What is it? It's a going away present leg. WizKids lets me pick a legacy card. Man, if you would have asked me like a month ago, I would have said Weapon X. Um, just because I've, I've always loved that test tube sculpt, the uh, breaking out. A legacy. Ah, uh, you know what? I think it's got to be Wendigo. That's my... My second love in, in HeroClix life. Even there we though go. I don't have the ten to goes anymore, I only have the two to go. Uh, that's still, yeah. We did get a new Wendigo recently, but uh, yeah, I, I like my two by two Monster Man. Fair, that's a legit pick. Yeah. As another going away present, WizKids lets you make a figure that has never been printed. What is it? Never been printed. I'm gonna go with Dog Welder, just because I, oh. I want the the out of the box, the stuff that no one reads, and then people will be like, "What is this?" And then they'll have to read up like how Dog Welder Two once saved the universe, or maybe it was just the world. I don't remember. Uh, by welding a dog to a son or a son to a son, I can't remember exactly what he did. <laughs> he's, he's a really good welder, though. So. It sounds like you can just weld a dog to anything. Not that's, yeah, that's metallic his actual surface. Power. This is incredible. You would think that it's like some sort of weird nickname, but no, it literally just describes what he does. He welds dogs. He is dog welder. Truly, truly wild. Yeah, that's a figure that needs to be in Hero Clicks. I don't know how we've gone this far without it. Uh, what brand of gold watch did Calder and Ian buy for you for your podcast retirement? Mm, interesting question, Bill. I believe it's called a Nokia and a, mm. a, Ro, a Rokia Ro, Roku. There I don't you go. Know. It's some of the letters rubbed off already. So I can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tyler M asked, do you guys think trick arrows and masters of time will be re-sculpt of the prior piece or will we get a new sculpt boxing glove? Hopefully. And then he has, what should the boxing glove card do? I, I kind of like the generic sculpt for the trick arrow because it's an object that's taking place of, you know, big arrow, USB arrow, electric arrow. It's like all that different stuff. So if it's got a boxing glove on it, I'm fine with that. I'm also fine if it's just generic looking arrow. Sure. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, honestly, I don't <laughs> I don't know. So we're definitely getting trick arrows. I feel like boxing glove is like probably what they'll do to help differentiate whatever, make it look different from the Marvel trick arrows, the DC trick arrows. Um I do hope all the effects are unique. If boxing glove was just like how you get to use Quake on one of them, maybe this is like you get to use close combat expert when you shoot this like yeah you gotta like make an attack using quake and this one is like you gotta make an attack using close combat expert i think it'd be pretty cool yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't know something like that boxing glove punching like to, people i'd like to see one that like hands out battle fury for a turn so just ooh, anyone that's gonna try and make a range attack suddenly no that's uh -oh. going. i'm not sure not if that's a boxing happen. arrow or not but Alex the Enchanter asks, what is your favorite thing to come from the podcast that you didn't expect? And this is for everybody. My favorite thing to come from the podcast. Ah, uh, man, there's, there's a lot. Um, I think the thing that still surprises me to this day and the thing that uh, I never quite fully like understood or believed or whatever you want to call it uh, was like the... The amount of people that actually listen and actually care and actually, uh, you know, like this was their like week to week. This was their um, just like consistent thing. And uh, whenever like someone would reach out and say like, you know, nice words about uh, stuff that we were doing, whether it was on the podcast or YouTube or whatever. And just the fact that we were a consistent source, because to me, this is just me talking to Calder in like a weird cadence like i'm talking to calder but also like as if there's a third person here and then uh it just goes out into the ether and 
whether people listen to it or not, I never really think about it. And then, you yeah. know, suddenly a bunch of people get back to you and you're just like, oh, well, that's uh, crazy, embarrassing, hilarious, uh, awesome. It's, you know, it's just, that's the thing I, I never really expected. I never uh, expected us to grow the way we did. And then uh, also just like our fans to all be awesome people. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll sound corny. I'll do. I'll do a corny answer. Uh, it's the friendship. It really is the friends you make along the way. Dial H. We are videos and podcasts and silly skits and live streams and whatever. But ultimately, the best part about Dial H has you know not even been the opportunities. While I love all of those. Uh, it's just been getting to know people, getting to like you really you, you can have a friendship with somebody, um, but that gets elevated so much more when you not only make content with them, but like, I don't know, just talk to them so, so frequently and it kind of rocks. So like probably the, my favorite thing about Dial H for Hero Hooks has just been like being more, I don't know having like a friendship with Ian and Simeon and like all the other people that because of that, because of dial H I've got to know, I've got to talk with, I've got to learn about that stuff just rocks. Yeah. And then, you know, as a close second, probably extreme rules, <laughs> 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 yeah. probably just making like videos because again, the, the thing that I always also really like about dial H is I, I like to think we try to make content that's different. And I like to think we challenge other content creators and other people that make content to step outside their comfort zone, to step outside the podcast unboxing, podcast unboxing gameplay, podcast unboxing gameplay to, well, although all those things are awesome in their own right, they're very simple. And I think Dial H elevated a lot of content Um to be slightly more than that, to where sometimes an unboxing is room for a fun skit. Sometimes, you know, podcasts have a different layer to them that may not be outwardly seen right away to where uh, thumbnails aren't just random JPEGs, but are cosplays, you know, like all, all sorts of just random stuff and weird humor and all of that. I think that's just part of what makes everything so fun. And so that's why I always enjoyed the project that, uh, probably just straight up say it, it probably bombed, I guess. I don't know. We, we did, it was a lot of work. It was extreme rules was an insane amount of work for 400 views, maybe up to now. I think it got around 300 initially got, it was very low. It was very low. Um, but we just wanted to do something really cool. The, the uh, videos for it got more views than the actual video. Uh, like, yeah. Uh, all, all you had to do was click. Uh, I, I just don't keep even expect clicking. you to watch the whole thing. Just, just a few more. Just a few more clicks and you'll get there, please. But yeah, being able to do Extreme Rules where Simeon and I made wrestling personas and we play using only WWE characters and we make all these dumb challenge cards uh, that influence the game that aren't even really wrestling related at all. They're like name puns, most of them. Uh and it's just hilarious and then hitting each other with steel chairs and that bleeds into some of the live streams on honestly shout out to episode 400 live stream that was also just one of the best dial h moments yeah ever that one was so fun that was just like a an insane an insane <laughs> night of just celebrating all the episodes of dial h so yeah big long answer to saying it's the friendships and the memories and the weird stuff we did that nobody asked for. I can, I think I can say, yeah, exactly. No people asked us to do extreme rules or wanted to see that. I think at all ever, um, but we did it anyways and it was hilarious and it was really fun. Alex goes on to ask, um, ooh, ah, sorry, no, we already did this. The maggot asks, would you say that you find vigilante relatable? Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Uh, he's cool. I guess he's a, he's a goofy character. I think one person once said I looked like him. I'll take that. I suppose. I don't think I find vigilante relatable though. I don't think I can relate to, uh, the vigilante at all. I don't know. Like, well, yeah. Maybe like some aspects of him, but not, uh, not enough where I would be like, yeah, his whole persona that's you know um 
I would say like the the weird awkward like how he doesn't know normal social cues but not the uh inability to feel or have empathy <laughs> like for I human can't, life can't, yeah, and uh, uh other people <laughs> yeah. yeah that's oh, that's a little wild uh luke 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 uh, i think i'm gonna skip this one i don't know if i <laughs> yeah yeah i only know of the one so i only know about the <laughs> yeah i think we're i think we'll be all right uh but he does also ask with you stepping away from dial h does this mean we'll finally see the completion and release of your 16 part fan funded mutant head and crab docu series oh man the like <laughs> with that i'm trying to think of a pun name that would make sense for a uh, docu series based on mutant head crab like uh crushing the twitter crabs uh mm. it's got to be it's something about finding uh combing for twitter crabs combing for mutant head crab i don't know uh no sadly i was issued a cease and desist so oh. even though parts 1 through 12 are all filmed and fully edited they cannot be released to the public because uh mutant head crab has some good lawyers um my lawyers looked at what his lawyer sent over and they said, yes, uh, you will have to pay us a lot more if you want to deal with this. And I said, I do not. No, thank you. I think if there's ever always been one true thing about mutant head crab, it's that he is way too much work than what it's worth in any <laughs> regard. <Yeah. That's laughs> Just any point fair assessment. Yeah. Uh, Alex asks, should we cons- be, cons- oh, geez. Uh, be concerned about the massive audio logs that Simeon has of every uh, of Discord voice chats? Oh, man. Hmm. No, I do have massive audio logs, but uh, they are mostly stored away on an external hard drive, and all of them are uncut, so it's just, if ever I was recording at some point, then it is not worth it for anyone to dig through anyone that would have wanted to dig through it already has so like my my fbi handler's like putting his finger <laughs> in his piece and he's like i think he knows um no honestly uh most of it's gone most of our uh old con if it's not already uploaded to podbean then most of our old stuff's already been deleted off of my stuff and then Almost all of the bloopers have been uploaded. Um, yeah, for certain reasons, we couldn't do as many bloopers in the last couple seasons, mostly because we didn't do as much pre-show banter as we used to. Uh, and by pre-show banter, I mean like we would just join a call while we were eating for like the first 30 minutes. And so that's that's been a thing of the past. So no, not really any bloopers to file through. Uh and I mean, I guess I could make a super cut of all the times we like sneezed or coughed or got something. That would be a or wild. It's it. That would be such a wild podcast. I don't know if just by the end of it, you'd be able to tell. Oh yeah, that's a Simeon cough. No, that's a Calder sneeze. Yeah, I, I by the end you would definitely be able to know. But that's that would be the the insane super cut. I don't know. Email us dial h for here at gmail dot com. Release the sneeze cut. Release the Simeon sneeze cut. I don't know. The sneeze cut. That would be next level. There. Oh, there you go. Edison asks. Just listened to episode five twenty three. Thank you, Simeon. It was a pleasure meeting you. I hope whatever is coming up, all is well with you. Your batch rock has always been my favorite. If you were to design a legacy card for the Captain America zero twenty eight batch rock, what powers uh, would you give him? All right. So uh, first and foremost, it was great meeting you too, Edison. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to make it again this year to see you again because Worlds is a ton of fun. And surprisingly, you're not the only person that had an affinity for Batrock or has an affinity for Batrock. Wild as it seems, like I never would have thought of all the like. I don't even know how we settled on Batrock as the guy that was getting beat up in that. Video. I don't know why. I don't know why we went with that either. I think this was also like one of the sketches I wrote. So I was just kind of like, yeah, we just need a villain. Let's do Batrock. I think it's probably all the thinking that went into it. But 
looking back, it does make very little sense. Is like he's not in Avengers Forever. Like he's just not in that set <laughs> at all. So it it was just kind of random. Uh, albeit it obviously rocks. Yeah, it's uh, it worked. It worked. Might be one of my favorite sketches. Would have done. anything else. Uh, let's see. So this bat rock starts with a speed power and then ends with a, a special speed power and then ends with a special damage power. Uh, so speed power would have to become ho ho ho, and it would just be something where uh, if he's like adjacent to blocking or elevated terrain, you may knock him back. And then if a character would end his knockback, then uh, I don't know. It's got it's got to be some sort of ping pong or pinball like effect where he just keeps bouncing. So uh, let's see. Yeah, it'd be like the ram ability. But if you can keep hitting, then you can keep bouncing through this person. Uh, yeah, let's say like I would dig that. Uh, it's got to have like traded exploit or something too. Then uh, originally it was leap climb. After he resolves a move action, make a close attack as a free action. Yeah, that, that's basically ram. So ram, but can bounce between like walls because that's okay. what Batrock does in that video. He just keeps flying in from the sides of the screen and then uh his damage power savate master can use flurry but only to attack characters that can't use combat reflexes or leap climb that is so specific <laughs> so yeah wildly that is specific if they can use leap climb or combat reflexes he has no chance against them uh man i think i would change this to be some sort of special leadership and uh regen ability because uh okay does he, does he not say like that, this is not hmm. the last you have seen of me oh yes Something yeah yeah, along yeah. Those lines i guess he also made an appearance in uh <laughs> masters of the simiverse the the, the multiversal, multiversal Mass, masters yeah. of simian yeah uh, Another sketch that just never has an end to it. That so, just has a cliffhanger and weird setup and just nothing else. Yeah, maybe his his leadership uh, when he succeeds, it spawns a Wolver Simeon, uh, and that's obviously just like flurry blades. Yeah, Wolver Simeon, don't let them escape or whatever he says. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that rocks. And also, just a good choice of a character for to get a legacy. If they ever did, like, yeah. were, to, were to legacy something, that would be a solid legacy character. It's an easily accessible one. It's a good sculpt. Iconic pose. Iconic figure. I mean, somewhat iconic figure. But, yeah. You know, I own ten of it at one point. I would say it's iconic <laughs> for, for some people, maybe. But that is going to be... All of our all of our listener questions, but I wanna I gotta go through a few though because it's been quite a crazy ride. Simeon, what was one of your favorite sketches that we ever did? Oh gosh, ah, uh, one of my favorite sketches that we ever did. Man, I'll say the the Disney Plus, like the original Disney Plus, when we were in like the Vermilion apartment. And yeah. We were recording all of that and we were up like way way too late and we were trying to get like all of the, like the different stuff and like we were just doing kind of just like stream of conscious ideas just spitting stuff out seeing what would stick what people thought like might be funny like what we could work off of uh that was a really good night that was a really fun time also uh the, the Second part of Extreme Rules, the wager or whatever we called it. Oh man, that filming session was also just like such a fun, fun. The, I, I don't know. Yeah, the wager, man. I the never, never gonna see the light of day. Sadly, the never before seen content of Extreme Rules Part Two. That was just such an incredible everything about that. Where the filming the original like trailer for it which was like all that got filmed one night. And then the second time, basically filming all those opening parts, like again, uh, and then actually filming the entire thing and the planning of everything out. That was incredible. Not to mention, of course, the ranch hand, which 
became with it the the wildly crazy into the night filming that man that was such a good time oh, yeah, that was the, like the what if origins of the ranch hand yeah the the how caller and simeon met or whatever yeah so dumb so ridiculous uh the yeah holy of smokes that was funny the banklers are so funny. Oh, the bankler is so just, funny. Yeah, I don't know if it was sleep deprivation or if it was genuinely just actually funny, but the idea of in this universe, Ian is both a banker, like a a finance person for uh, ranch hands everywhere, and then also at night moonlights as a butler for Billion Clicks Bruce. That was just uh, that was hilarious to me. Oh, it was so oh, it was so good. Man, it was awesome. And then I gotta agree, that entire Disney Plus sketch filming weekend was like I don't know, it was kind of it was both like the end of an era and start of a new era, it felt like for me personally, anyways, as I was like moving from that Vermilion apartment. I wasn't gonna be there anymore, and I was like, man, what what's after this? And it just felt like such a great way to to leave that space by doing like all those sketches. Cause they were just so fun. The moon Knight, Calder and Wanda Simeon were just gosh, hilariously and dumb sketches that just rock that were just like, yeah, felt so, I don't know. It felt great to film. They, those were ones where it was like, we all had like our second time really filming with all three of us in, you know, with us and everything where we actually had like a plan for these sketches and they were actually kind of like scripted out instead of just like riffing and they were just so much fun. Just an insane amount of fun. Yeah. Then, Especially the Moon Knight one being uh what, a full year and some change before we'd actually get an announcement Moon Knight. of a Moon Knight figure. Like yeah. A, or Disney Plus Moon Knight figure. Yeah, us also, yeah, just doing a sketch that has, like, there are just none of these characters are in this set because the original Disney Plus set was, like, the first three or so shows. Even though Moon Knight came out earlier that year, it was just, like, we, we wouldn't get it for so long. Uh, maybe a re-release is in order of the of these sketches. I don't know. They did do well, though. Maybe they could be a fun re-release. Uh, a mega cut. All sketches from 2022 or something mega cut. I don't know. Honestly, all the Disney Plus content, the finally getting a brick, the massive road trip to get there and film it and do all this in a day and turn around time, the gameplay, just uh, everything about the initial like Disney Plus content and starting the us getting bricks from WizKids was just an insane ride that didn't even feel like real. It was so awesome. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. What and then okay, another just kind of question. What was your favorite part from the first worlds we ever did? The Hero Clicks Worlds twenty twenty two. What was your favorite part about that? What was uh maybe a moment or whatever? Oh, I mean there's obviously so many good moments that year. Um I think the two that stick out the most was doing the interview with uh Scott Diagnostio. Yeah. That was I don't know if he had ever been on like another podcast at that point or whatever, but that felt like uh really cool getting like behind the scenes, having him drop some like info that wasn't privy to like the common hero clicks player at that time. Um, getting some like uh, that was before small maps and terrain and all these other things that they had talked about at like the fan appreciation night. Um, we covered like all that, like went over like a bunch of that stuff. And that was really cool. Uh, and then, uh, meeting Andrea, that was awesome. The trip back riffing and just like talking about like the plan for like IPF, like the seedling that started there. And then, uh, also just like the, the trip there and back. I remember really enjoying the trip back and I don't know if it's just cause we were mean to James the whole time. Uh, that was, I mean, that was funny. But yeah, that was, yeah, uh, he was a good sport about it at least. Yeah, he was, which is very appreciative. <laughs> very appreciative. Uh, we were all so tired. Oh man, so so tired. Yeah, that was that was an insane interview. That just like getting the little little uh, 
what was it called? It's like the Sinister Six all maybe do something if you roll a six. And I was like, oh my gosh, what does it mean? Rally, what? It was really cool, like hinting at like the elevation changes. That was like so insanely cool. I love that. Yeah. Worlds, worlds, uh, worlds rocked and it will continue. It will continue to rock. But all right, everybody, that's kind of the bulk, the bulk of the show. I don't know if there's anything else we want to go over or talk about. Well, I do think we should at least go into a little bit, uh, the ironically, again, another Disney Plus one, but the Hero Clicks next phase that was also one of the projects that obviously was earlier this year, but we got to be the first people to unbox a set. Oh yeah. And I think that was one of my favorite filming days we ever did as well. And it's still just a video that I go back and rewatch. And oh, uh, the, every time the, the like us uh, pitching shows to us pitching shit. shows. Yeah. That's, the dial H network. Yeah. I'm, I'm so proud of that, that I, I send that to people who have no clue what hero clicks is uh, just because like one, it, it doesn't really get into hero clicks. It's just a fun skit. Um, but two, yeah, I just, I genuinely think that was, and also the blooper reel from it is probably like one of my top, like rewatched videos on YouTube because I don't know why that was just, that was a really fun day. It, I don't know. It was just an insane, we were, that was once again, dial H in full force. We had all these great ideas and it was just one after the other. We were executing them. We were doing them. We were filming them and finally seeing that come to life, especially 600 year life is just too funny. There's the burnout Wolverine is like gotta be one of the funniest characters ever. It's like the, all the, the Wolver Simeon stuff that started with like X of swords unboxing, which was just like, we don't really have a skit. Let's just <laughs> kind of riff. And it was so funny to then, yeah, getting like a culmination of 600 year life. And then uh, <laughs> the whatever it's called, this most recent like Deadpool Weapon X, just fun, goofy character. What Who who was your favorite character? We have there's Batrock, there's Wolver Simeon, there's obviously... Billy and Clicks Bruce. Oh man. Uh Wanda Simeon. There's a lot of good ones. I I think that it's it's gotta be Billy and Clicks Bruce. I feel yeah, like no, I'm uh, there with you, I agree. What started off as just trying to be like a, a pompous, like fancy boy heel. Calder went with like the the man of the land kind of like angle and was like the baby face for our for our first series, and I was like I I've watched enough wrestling. I know who the perfect like counter to this is, and that's a uh, yeah fancy boy, uh, Rich McGee over here. Um, yeah, and then uh, yeah, Billion Clicks like spun off into his own little shenanigans, and apparently he took over a universe at some point. And uh, so yeah, the uh, D one four L universe or whatever it was yeah. <laughs> that like. Billion Clicks has like taken over. I also like the idea that Billion Clicks and that persona is what led you to make the Prince format, where Popper was popular at the time as like a format to modern, where it's like, oh, commons and commons, whatever. And then we wanted to host a tournament, and the idea of the Prince format, where it has to be like chases, super rare primes, and LEs. <laughs> Yeah, just rocks, it's and like now it like, exclusives chases and like <laughs> super primes where it as like it's kind of become its own format. Some people use it, some people I don't know, like, but it's just such a funny format where it's just the opposite end, where it's like the least accessible stuff is what you have to play. Yeah, I think uh, there was a lot of God Emperor Doom that got played, if I remember rightly. There was so much. I love that the announcement for that tournament video is just Billy and Clicks Bruce as well, and I'll never, I'll never forget <laughs> the. Uh, that was such a good take that I ruined by laughing at the end of it. I, was I like, liked no. that one. Yeah, yeah it was so good. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that was the good evening. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh, that, yeah, that's just too funny. Good, good evening. <laughs> oh, gosh. Goodness <laughs> gracious. 
but yeah, all the all the different personas have just all been so fun. But yeah, Billion Clicks. I mean, and we all knew he was the best. He was the leader of the of the evil simian revolution. And yeah, it was. Gosh, it was so funny. Let's. I don't know. Is there any behind the scenes stuff we could talk about that could be kind of fun for the listener? The hmm, like how uh, what's it called? Batch Rock. The Batch Rock oh, costume gosh. was made in like a day. The, like the, the same day costume was uh was it like you and luke ran over to like say or to like walmart and picked up some uh tidy whities and some like long johns and yep. a plain like white t-shirt or a long sleeve shirt. well we, we were so bummed because we th- i i guaranteed i was like oh we can definitely find a purple shirt that's plain and we could not so we yeah diet purple in uh ian's garage it's hilarious yeah <laughs> just a to get the costume uh, uh, me stirring a bucket and <laughs> calder comes out I'm like mm, good soup yep There's steam coming off of it um yeah and that that shirt took to purple really well the pants not so much and oh. I, I still yeah i still have the Heidi whities that are stained yellow the, and the I yellow no use for because I don't know when I would ever wear them. <laughs> it's so so wild. And then yeah. you like you like tie dye. It's kind of <laughs> similar, not it's really. <laughs> uh, Luke throwing together the the boots, and then yeah, it was just like le- uh, not leather, um, like normal dishwashing gloves, like just those yellow dishwashing gloves. That was a really fun. That and then the uh, makeup behind the scenes for that was also John Walker being all. Oh yeah, up. like with uh, enough filtering and low quality, you could actually think that like we had gotten into a scuffle in that those pictures. Yeah, I I really liked though. That's like one of my favorite pictures of us, and I've like showed that to a lot of people. I was like, yeah, this is what me and my buddy looked like after getting in a fight the other day or so I don't know what I would say just random stuff and be like no you didn't I'm like yeah no it's funny <laughs> to think I had you there maybe for a but second imagine if we did what yeah. if we did though yeah those rock oh man we do have a email from a local here for Simeon so Aaron McCoy sending in he's like hey it's Aaron from Krypton slash Dragon's Lair of Krypton and Dragon's Lair fame uh, it was crushing blow to hear about Simeon's last episode on Dial H, and I just thought I would send some thoughts and a couple questions for the episode. Simeon was one of the first people I met when I started playing locally at Krypton a couple years ago, really welcoming and always willing to share his veteran wisdom. He mentioned the podcast to me one night, and I've been a listener ever since. I honestly owed my continued interest and enjoyment of the game to Simeon and this podcast. Your channel always has the best takes on happenings in the game and keeps things exciting the best takes that's big praise big praise uh although i know he'll still be around locally i'm bummed to no longer be able to hear him on the podcast and with that i have some questions will simeon be devoting more time to pursue his lifelong passion for meteorology (laughs) uh no but close Ah. uh yeah not not too far off i uh i am gonna be going to the stars that's there we go. The actual, the real answer is uh, I entered a sweepstakes and I won. Mr. Beast is going to put me on a rocket to colonize Mars. It's a it's supposed to be hush hush, but um, they can't kick me out now. So uh, yeah, it's a Mr. Beast and Tesla co-op. They're going to be launching a Tesla to Mars with uh, however many people fit in one of those cyber trucks. It's supposed to be airtight, so fingers crossed no uh realistically i am going back to school it's not for meteorology um but that is the reason yeah it's just the uh, school is quite demanding of the time schedule and so i i don't know if i'll be able to keep up with the fast-paced turns that dial h has to do and uh also just you know one of the things that i really didn't want to do is just I didn't want the quality to diminish. I didn't want to be forcing stuff out or like trying to edit something without enough time to get it up and, or, you know, go like weeks at a time without uploading that kind of stuff. So 
it was just uh it made the most sense that if i'm gonna take school seriously this time around because i tried it once and i did not take it seriously and I, i'd have to put all of my effort towards that and so that's what it actually is but uh maybe i'll pop in every so often to uh let you guys know how terrible the midwest weather is because it doesn't look like it's getting any better anytime soon so no that is kind of the second question Aaron asks. He's like, will Simeon Miss still make occasional cameo appearances in future videos and guest appearances in future recordings? And I personally, I see no reason not to. We have a fun idea or a, a fun skit. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like my essentially, my availability is just undetermined right now. But, uh, yeah, this is my, my last official episode. But doesn't mean that it'll be the last episode ever. And then, yeah, hopefully I'll make some cameo appearances maybe i'll be even be in like a, i don't know the super cut for worlds one year Ooh. as the winner not Ooh. Likely. Not likely. <laughs> i'd have to start getting way better at hero clicks kind of dropped off on the the old good at this game kind of part of it the 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 training, the Rocky Balboa esque training, though, to get back into competitive hero clicks uh, fight shape. I don't know. Yeah, shape. Yeah. yeah, I guess. But thank you so much for sending that in, Aaron. We also got an awesome Facebook message from McConnell Lamar saying, Simeon, thank you for all the hours, dedication, and love you put in the podcast. It was always great hearing your thoughts, humor, and food recommendations. While I'm sad to hear you'll be stepping away from the podcast, I take great solace in knowing that you'll be dedicating your life to bringing Naruto to Hero Clicks. <laughs> but seriously, I wish you luck in your next endeavor, and thank you for being a member of the Hero Clicks community. Thank you, McConnell. Yes, as always. Man, I st- still just blows me away. The first time I I met McConnell, and like someone was like, "Yeah, that's McConnell Lamar." I was like, "What? This this man has been." For like years, it's just been the back of his head as his profile picture, and that's all I knew him as. <laughs> and it's just stunning, stunning individual. Uh, Honestly, yeah. But yeah, thank you, McConnell. Uh, one of the people that reached out to me about the Budino, of course. Um, no, there's there's so much stuff that I'm gonna miss about uh, being part of like the, a different part of this community. I should say the content creation part, like a big aspect. Uh, and there's so many awesome memories. And, uh, so yeah, I don't really want to focus too much on like the why and like the other like aspects. I just want to, I want to thank everybody that ever reached out and everyone that ever listened. Um, even if you didn't reach out, if you were just one of the numbers that like blipped up, it's what, uh, helped keep us going. Obviously I never would have been here if it wasn't for Calder. So I have to thank him tremendously. And then us pushing through uh, 2020 is probably the only reason that I'm still interested in hero clicks, because if I didn't have somebody to talk to every week about it and play uh, Thursday throwdowns every week with, I don't know if I would have uh, kept up with the game at all. I know it probably would have dropped off because, well, frankly, I, I wasn't able to play in 2020. So I don't know what I would have done. I there were so many people that would say stuff like, "Man, it's been so long," and I was like, "Really? I played like <laughs> five games this month. Like, you you played zero? Huh? Yeah, that's crazy." Like, and so yeah, that, I mean, there's just so many good memories, and uh, I look forward to going back to the original start of Dial H and slowly listening my entire way back through. I think that's how I'll spend my retirement. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't agree more with everything. I think mean, it's been such an awesome ride. I think there was so much just amazing memories that we've been able to make over the years, and it's just been such a pleasure to be able to make something for so many people to enjoy and that have enjoyed. And kind of like I said earlier, even a better pleasure to be able to call you my friend. So it's just been such a great ride with Dial H and everything. And I just could not be happier with uh, with how everything's gone. And I'm glad you'll be able to be a part of that, Simeon. It rocked. That's all I got, listener. That's it. That's all you're getting from me. I'm not going to cry. You want me to cry? I already did that. I did that earlier. I'm going to enter it and post crying noises, sobbing noises. <laughs> 
And I just, I don't know what to do. No. Uh, I mean, we've said it before, but yeah, like on a personal level, we still both live in Omaha, so we'll still be able to see each other and hang out. And then as as far as a, a community level, I'll still be playing in Omaha. I'll still try and make it to some of the bigger events every now and then. And uh, on a much smaller aspect, I might still even pop up and dial H stuff every now and then. So I'm I'm not gone. I'm not going all the way away. I'm not going like, you know, all the way away to like a different country kind of thing. But yeah, I uh, I apologize to all of you guys out there, all of you ladies out there, whoever may be listening. Uh, if you got too used to me and my voice, I'm deeply sorry that uh, this will be the last official time that uh, you have to deal with it. I don't know. You have to put up with my, my ramblings. Sadly, they'll just have to get used to listening to the pickle man and uh there's no other way around it sorry listeners it's the way it goes i don't make the rules i just abide by them and i just try to teach them but all right that'll be i'll be a readout yeah so I don't, if you want to i hate to take away <laughs> plugging <laughs> from you one last time no no absolutely let me just find uh let's see Let's look up all the all the Bruces that you could own. Uh, let's see. There's, there's Bruce Wayne from Batman Animated Series. There's uh, Bruce Wayne from the classic TV series. Uh, there's somehow not a single Simeon in Heroclix, which is wild to me. There's uh, Bruce Banners. Those guys exist, too. Uh, if you want to pick up these singles, there's a good place you can do that. And that's at CoolStuffInc.com. We can find cool stuff in stock Every day, including the latest Heroclix singles, those Deadpool Weapon X ones have been flying off the website. So sometimes they get new ones in, sometimes they don't. They might be sold out, they might not be. I know the little uh, little Beetle Borg dudes, uh, they were sold out at one point, and now they're back. So pick up some Time Skipper, Time Keeper, Time oh. Time Roaches, whatever they're called, uh, if you want some yeah, of those. Those little, those little weirdos, those little old guys. And when you do... Make sure you use code DIAL5 to save 5% off of your order. It does stack with your normal discounts, so that's super cool. And if you want to go direct to the source, go to shop.wizkids.com, where I think they are still, maybe not at the time of you hearing this, but at the time of recording this, they're still doing their 50% off uh, 4th of July-ish sale. And they've got some cool stuff. They've got a Giant Man Colossal. I never had one of the... The two by two sinister, or sinister, geez, two by two sinestro colossals, and he's like twelve bucks on there. Mm, so, that's our speed. Yeah, there's, that's like the 2017 one, not the original original convention exclusive one. Uh, but yeah, you can check them out shop.wizkids.com, and uh, on your order, if you use code dial H10, there's a chance that you'll save ten percent off. It won't use, won't work on a. Uh, specialty figures or promotional things won't work on pre-orders or iconics so if you're already getting 50 percent off you can't add another 10 percent to that sadly but you still add it to other items so make sure you check to see if it works first and just like that ladies and gentlemen this has been dial h for hero clicks your home for all sorts of hero clicks unboxings youtube videos podcasts and more and like always happy trails Peace. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Ooh. <laughs> Not going there. That's how numbers work. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of you.